Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're going to talk about the new Supermicro 1U 12 Bay Ultra Server. Now this actually fits 12 two and a half inch NVMe drives in a single 1U server, accessible right through the front. Now it used to be back in the day when we started STH that a 1U server would typically have about eight two and a half inch bays on front. Then we went to an era where there was this big expansion and we went from eight bays to ten bays, and now we're at twelve. Now we haven't reviewed a 1U Supermicro Ultra server in a long time on STH. And because of this whole global pandemic thing, we haven't really been able to go to trade shows to actually check out this new 12 bay unit. So we haven't been able to see it there. And so I, when we were doing this whole series at Supermicro one day, I said, hey guys, I really wanna go see one of the Ultra servers, specifically this 1U 12 bay server, because I think it's actually something that's really cool. And I mean, just think about it, it's really a very simple value prop. You went from 10 drives and now you have 12 drives on the front, so you get more storage capacity, which is great for some people. And when we were there, we actually saw a lot more than just this single server. In fact, I actually found another Ultra product that I was like, oh my gosh, that's super cool and has a feature that I'm actually really excited about, it, even though it's a kind of dorky little feature. So we actually got to look at two different Ultra platforms, which is kind of cool, including a brand new one. And here's a tip. Keep watching to the end of the video, because towards the end of the video, we go through something that's not really hardware related, but is super important to understand the Supermicro Ultra line. And it just so happened that just randomly, this story and something that I want to tell in terms of a message actually was completely shown in a way better manner than I could have ever planned had I tried planning it myself. So let's get in the car, head over to Supermicro and check this thing out. So I'm headed over straight down 237 right now. And the purpose of this is that we're actually gonna go take a look at some products that I would normally take a look at during trade show coverage, but because we don't have trade shows this year, we didn't get to go do. Now I got to send Supermicro a list of all the products that I wanted to go look at. I got to, you know, make that list myself. I get to say whatever the heck I want, but Supermicro said that they'd get the products for me. They'd also get as many product managers as were feeling comfortable coming into the office as soon as the shelter in place order was over. Now, just for full disclosure here, Supermicro did provide the products because we're gonna do it in their demo room. They're providing the office space. They're also filming. The one thing that's gonna be interesting is we have to wear masks in this video because we're gonna be in the office and corporate policy says we have to wear masks. So get ready for that. And so we actually managed to get Jerry Dean, who's the director of system solutions and specifically, I mean, Ultra is your baby at Supermicro. So maybe could you kind of give us some kind of idea in terms of who the Ultra line and specifically a system like this 1U 12 bay Ultra, you know, who are the typical customers for? What are the applications people use it for? Yeah, so when we do take a look at the 1U Ultra itself, um, Ultra platform is actually targeted more towards the enterprise-based customers. But because of the flexibility and the different type of configurations you can accommodate with the Ultras, it's actually expanded to a lot more. So the simple message is that, you know, this Ultra platforms themselves, ranging from a 1U, 2U form factor, can actually accommodate uh, many different type of requirements. So therefore you can consolidate a lot of different type of server requirements down to just a few ultras. So we're seeing this being used in you know, big data with our 2U24 based solutions themselves. Um, you have HPC type of applications. Uh, we can accommodate dual with GPUs, FPGA cards. Um, so you know, depending what the overall requirements are, we would be able to tap into a lot of different type of configurations. So it turns out that Jerry is actually talking about more than just this 1U Ultra server there because he runs the entire Ultra line. And because he has responsibility across the Ultra line, he kind of thinks about, well, I have some customers that like 1U servers, some customers that like 2U servers, and I sell them all, so this is cool. And so just to kind of give you some frame of reference of why we're talking about different servers there is because, well, there are other options, and this is the 1U version, but there are 2U versions of this as well. So AJ, I would imagine that a lot of the customers for this are you know, virtualization customers, hyper-converged infrastructure customers. I mean, is that kind of one of the big ideas, especially because, I mean, you have 12 drive bays in this thing, which is a lot more, I mean, it's 20% more than we used to have. Oh yeah, for sure. So what we're looking at here is that those are actually some of our top customers when it comes to virtualization hyper-converged itself. With virtualization itself, they actually love the idea of having an all flash NVMe array because you gain more IOPS and overall can support overall uh, more users. 
And with the Ultra platforms themselves, I mean, like, you know, you can have a large memory pool with the 24 DIMMs, as well as with the dual processors have additional core count. And that's all trickling down to, you know, more users and, you know, supporting the virtualization in that particular capacity. When we get into hyper-converged itself, it really comes down to, um, you know, the overall configurations that you can accommodate with the Ultras themselves. With the one new form factor, you literally have up to two full uh, by 16 PCI Express slots that you can accommodate for additional card. And when you get to the two U form factor, you can have up to eight um, expansion slots, which basically seven of them can be used um, in the rear. So, you know, whether it's going to be uh, GPU, FPGAs, uh, storage controllers, networking cards, um, you have that full flexibility depending on what the overall requirements would be. And with the 12th bay, you don't really lose any storage density versus going with the 2U 24 bay, right? Because you still have 12 bays per U. Yeah, yeah. And basically, in this particular case itself, um, the only contrast is that when you do double up in the 1U itself, you're going to have additional you know, CPU memory yeah. requirements. But if we did take a look at the overall form factor with the drive density, you're spot on. I mean, it's pretty much going to be uh, comparable in terms of that particular sense. And the 1U12 itself, uh, like you mentioned before, additional 20% in terms of storage by adding the extra two drives, and they're going to be your standard 2.5 15mm drives. Um, one thing I do want to note is that when we do talk about the 1U12 platform, it's what we call a full hybrid solution. So that means each one of these particular drives will be able to support NVMe, SATA, as well as SAS if there was the storage controller in there. And the other beauty of this particular platform is that it's basically balanced. So the first six drives is coming off the CPU one, and the second drives is going to be driven off CPU two. So that's a total of 48 PCI Express lines that we grab from both processors to allocate to these drives. The better the drives, the better your overall performance. And these support second generation Intel's Eon scalable processors, so you get features like DC persistent memory support these, right? And you can go up to 512 gig DIMMs? Exactly, I'm glad you brought that up. So when we talk about the second generation Intel's Eon scalable processors, you have 24 DIMM slots on this particular platform. This is one of the only platforms that Supermicro has that can accommodate the more density when it comes to uh, DC PMM or PMM for the short acronym. In this particular case, out of the 24 DIMMs, 12 of those DIMMs can accommodate the PMEM. So you can literally have, if you use the 512 gigabytes, up to six terabytes of PMEM additional to this particular platform. That brings the overall uh, memory capacity up to nine terabytes on basically the X11 Ultra. And that's something we have definitely seen in the lab. We've tried a couple systems that only support the 128 gig DIMMs. So that is something that's a little different, just in case you guys want to know. So this is actually a really fun segment to watch. So it turns out you're going to notice here that we're talking about Optane DC PMM, and we're kind of talking about PMEMs and persistent modules and all that kind of stuff. And the reason for that is that we were filming this just as the branding changed to from Optane DC PMM to PMEM 200 with Cooper Lake came out. So there was a branding change and Intel actually said, oh, we're gonna rebrand the original ones like the PMEM 100 series. And so we actually had this entire branding change. And so I was saying the wrong thing. I think Jerry was actually doing a much better job of using the PMEM terminology than I was, but I think he was still using DC PMM because we all were at that point. And it's just something that has been very confusing in the entire industry when you do this kind of renaming. So something else that I saw that was really cool is that the Supermicro Ultra platform has, you know, when we've done reviews of the 1U platforms, we've done reviews of the 2U platforms, but something that's a little bit different with this generation is the fact that they have this new platform. And what this is, is a short depth Ultra. So you're using the same motherboard, but it's in a short depth. So you can kind of see, maybe you can see this on camera, but this is actually way shorter than a typical server. And Jay, how much, how much shorter is this? Well, this particular one itself, we shrunk the size down to 22.6 inches. So that means we cut off five to six inches on your typical 2D server. And that's really important when you start looking at like the edge deployments, right? I mean, that's, that's something that people want. Oh, for sure. I mean, like they're always looking for space saving servers when you start getting to micro data centers just because of the limited space and the massive amount of deployments that need to be put nationwide. Yeah. And these things, I, one of the other cool features, we were just talking about this, but one of the other cool features I think is that you have a lot of customers that are actually putting the Intel N3000 FPGAs mm -hmm. into these slots because they're dual with slots and they can handle higher 
power cards, right? Exactly. One of the beauties of the 2D form factor is that it has better airflow design. And with this particular platform itself, with the six front loaded heavy duty fans, it actually has a more efficient airflow design because of the reduced side of the back plane. Yeah. With that said, not only can you do the FPGA N3000 cards, we can also accommodate two dual width GPUs in this particular solution as well. So GPUs, FPGA computing, as well as a variety of other networking cards and storage options. Cool. And something else that I saw on this, which a lot of people may not realize is super cool, but there is actually a brand new feature that is debuting, I think, on the Ultra line here, which is the latch. <laughs> That latch is a big deal. A lot of competitive servers actually have latches and I actually kind of like that feature because I think it's a nice way to open up a server and keeps things very clean. And so it's actually kind of cool that Supermicro is actually putting this onto one of their ultra servers. I think it's actually a great development. Okay, now for the big insight that is almost not really hardware related. So I have known Jerry and I first met Jerry, I actually know exactly when I met him. I met him at a flash memory summit years ago STH, so William Harmon and I, we were standing in the Fizen booth, we were showing off some server, I think it was like back then, maybe a 24 SAT SSD server in the Fizen booth at Flash Memory Summit, and we're standing there, Jerry walks by and he says, hey, that's my product. And he was really excited, really enthusiastic. And I've met Jerry a couple times since then, I don't know him like super well, but he's always had this certain personality and aura around him that I think was exemplified so well in this video. Something I wanted to show the STH readers, as well as those of you on YouTube, is, well, Jerry, because he's actually a big story in the Supermicro Ultraline. Now, Jerry's job at Supermicro is really to go compete with the bread and butter, you know, Dell PowerEdge, the HPE ProLiance, the Lenovo things. I mean, he is competing against the giant incumbents of the industry with Supermicro servers. And a lot of Supermicro servers, if you think about it, Supermicro is really well known for being able to create customized and very unique hardware configurations very quickly. And so there are some servers that Supermicro makes that they don't necessarily compete directly with HPE, Dell, and Lenovo because they can create something that those guys just can't get out fast enough. So Supermicro has a much faster time to market. And so while they compete, they kind of don't really compete in those segments. But Jerry's Ultraline is designed to literally compete with the best that those companies have to offer and that their huge marketing budgets go and support. So when we started filming this, I had this whole thing in the back of my mind and I didn't really know how I was gonna be able to say it and you know, even if this was gonna make it to this video, but then Jerry shows up exuding excellence in personal protective equipment. If you notice, Jerry has his glasses, but then he also has safety glasses on. He has a mask with the holder to make sure that, that mask stays on straight. He also has gloves on. I mean, he is absolutely doing personal protective equipment to the max. In fact, even before we started this video, he was even giving me tips and saying, hey, you know, you're kind of not wearing your mask right. You can use it a little bit better this way. And that personality trait of Jerry is important because he's the guy behind the ultra line. To be that guy for Supermicro going against the titans of the industry with a competitive product, you have to be someone like Jerry that is gonna be excellent in everything you do, even if that is putting on personal protective equipment. And so if you wanna know like kind of why this matters is that if you even look at the STH hosting cluster, probably the most common type of Supermicro server that we use, and we use you know, other brands as well, but of Supermicro servers, probably the most common one that we use is the Ultra line from Supermicro. And the reason for that is, well, part of the reason of that at least, is that I know Jerry well enough to know that that guy exudes excellence. And so he's not gonna be the guy that's gonna go cut a corner because, well, mm, just didn't feel like doing something today. He's the guy that's gonna go tackle something head on. And that's exactly what he did with his PPE during this whole pandemic. That's kind of a different insight and it's not really hardware related, but servers are not just the physical products that you see. And you know, they're in data centers for a long time, but it's also the story of the people behind the servers. And I think that's really important. So I kind of want to use this video, not only just to show a mainstream super micro line, but I also wanted to show something about the people behind it. We're going to have more about this whole 1U 12 bay ultra server in the STH main site article that we're going to link in the description. So you go check that out. And if you've made it this far, why don't you hit subscribe, turn on those notifications, and then you can see whenever we come out with a new video. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.